In today's tutorial let's learn how to do the woven plaid blanket another free pattern available by Yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the woven plaid blanket. This is a really simple idea and we're gonna be making some mesh work and then we're going to be using some yarn strands in order to weave through to create a plaid looking uh, project. It's actually really quite neat in order to do. Today's yarn is asking for Karen United but if you cannot find this in a store near you or you cannot order it online you can also substitute with Bernat Super Value a yarn in order to make this work. Just realize that the Karen United yarn balls are not as big as the Bernat Super Value so you will not need as many balls and I will provide that information on my website if you'd like to see what the conversion is in order for making this in Super Value instead. So let me tell you a little bit more about this patterning and how it's going to work for today. So today's patterning is all about making the mesh and the mesh is actually what is holding all of the yarn strands that are coming down through. And the mesh is made up of double crochets slash chain one and the double crochets are just sitting on top of each other to create a mesh like a window um, like a window screen really in order to keep it all in balance. So because they're all stacked up on top of each other all of the gapping spaces will align with each other to make the spacing uh, perfect and make sure that you can have this woven effect as it's going all the way through. But let me tell you a little bit more about this in order to follow these set of instructions really quite easily. So in the patterning we have to do the amount of rows in order to keep the, the effect looking plaid. So what I've done here is on the instructions it asks us to do um, some repeat patterning. Okay so we're going to start off with and I'm gonna provide this information on my website if you wish, thecrochetcrowd.com and essentially the patterning is a repeating of rows number three all the way to 14 and we have to repeat that eight times. So what I decided to do for myself is that I created this chart so whenever I get something done I can just check mark, check mark, check mark all the way down for the repeat number one, repeat number two. So the first time we have to run through all this on its own and then we have to repeat eight times and I have boxes here in order to check it. So you can see here's what the color orientation is. So it starts off with cherry, cherry, dark green, cherry, cherry, white, white, fresh green, green, uh, white, fresh green, fresh green, cherry, cherry. So when we go to end on 14 we're gonna come right back to number three again and start once again. Do you notice how we started off with cherry up here? And because we started off with cherry when we get to the final one of the repeat eight we're gonna finish off with cherry on the other side. So you end up with a really nice looking and balanced afghan when you see it all done like so. Okay, so let's uh, begin to do some of the mesh work and I'll show you how to do the strands coming through and create these uh, fringing because the fringing is done at the same time of the strands as well. So while we're on the patterning all these strands that are coming through there's actually an order on how they're coming through. So if you look at the weaving diagram just like this. So in the first space you'll start off with these colors just like you see it within the diagram. Okay, so these are all the strands that are coming through and you just have to follow and just check them off as you do it. Once you start seeing the repeat patterning that you can see here um, it becomes really quite easy in order to do. You may spend a bit of time doing all the strands through but this is a plaid look and this is what it takes in order to get the look as well. So let's start this patterning and I'm going to use Bernat Super Value Size H 5 millimeter crochet hook today and let's put this on the hook. So if the patterning calls for 165 chains but if you'd like to change the size of this it's very easy to do. Just know if you change the width you're going to change the patterning of the striping so just be very conscientious of that. So if you would like to change the size and come up with your own concepts for the, the plaiting look uh, just re keep it on an odd size. So for example it's 165 for your chain so you can do like 157. You can do 145 as long as it's an odd number. So I'm going to do 17 today. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16 and 17. So there we go. So there is my odd number chain. You will have 165 if you are following the patterning just like um, it suggests. To start the first row we're going to go fifth chain from the hook. So we have that chain so we got one, two, three, four and five. 
turn that chain over and get the back hump only and I want you to double crochet into that fifth chain. So in the rules of crochet what's gonna happen is that chaining of three um, counted as a um, as a half double, sorry, as a double crochet and then we have a chain one. So that's where all of this is coming into effect. So we're creating the mesh on the outside. So to go to the next one we chain one, skip the next chain and go to the second one over for another double crochet and we're gonna do the entire uh, chain like that. So chain one, skip the next chain and then double crochet into the next one. So I want you to do that all the way across and I'll show you how to turn around and do the the next row and all of these rows are identical to each other. It's just a matter of changing the color strategically as it suggests in the pattern and uh, it's really quite an easy pattern to work on and it will go fast because you're just putting all these mesh uh, kind of stitches in. So you'll come up to the very last one here and double crochet. So let me show you how to turn around and make sure that the mesh stays on top of each other. So in row number two we want to come around and we want to just turn our work and we're going to chain up again. So we're going to this time chain up four. So this counts as a double crochet and a chain one. So one, two, three and four and we're going to half double crochet right, or sorry, we're going to double crochet right in the top of the other double crochet followed by a chain one and then we double crochet right into the next double crochet followed by a chain one. Okay, double crochet into the next one followed by a chain one, double crochet into the next one, chain one, double crochet in the next one and you're gonna do that all the way across. That's how easy this patterning is. When you come up to the edge remember that you do have four chains here so you're gonna chain one. You wanna come up to the third one. So one, two, three. You gotta make sure you have this extra one left over because that is considered your chain one. Okay? So when you turn your work it's just like what you did and all of these double crochets should sit on top of each other. When I come back I'm gonna show you how to change colors and I'll show you how to do that next. So whenever you have to change a color what I would recommend is cut your yarn just like so and just yarn over and pull through. And I like to fasten off completely when I'm doing projects like this and I wanna use this yarn and I'm just going to weave it through some of the stitch work that is existing already. Because it is green and this color and the straggler is green, if you weave it in the green it's gonna be very hard to tell to see where it is the next time you're going over. So I want you to turn your work and let's get your next color. I'm gonna switch to blue and I'm going to start off with the slip knot. It's just my personal preference and I wanna come into the top of the first double crochet and I wanna just join it. So I'm just gonna join it just with the one strand only. So I just pull through and then I'm gonna use both strands and I'm going to chain two. So one and two with both strands and then the next two I wanna keep just the one strand, one and two. You see I've, I've been crocheting so long that I've almost got that down to a science. So then I'm just going to do exactly what I've already done before. I'm going to double crochet in the next double crochet and because you weaved in your other color in there it's gonna get stuck underneath so it's great. So chain one and double crochet into the next double crochet. Chain one. Okay and that's all you have to do for these the mesh to create it. So I've now just I've gotten back to the where the stragglers that I w uh, weaved in I can throw it in behind. I can safely cut that afterwards and I'm not gonna be worried about that falling out on me. So I just keep on going to the end. Remember it's how you finish the end which makes the world a difference. So chain one, there's four chains here. Make sure you come to the third one. There should be a chain one that you don't touch and I'm going to turn my work and have show you one more time. So turn your work, chain four. One, two, three, four. Come into the first double crochet. Chain one. Next one. So I'm going to then show you how to do the strands next. So you're gonna do the whole project. Just follow the color schemes um, that it's asking you to do uh, for going in the horizontal direction that you're doing right now and then I'm gonna show you how to do the strand work right after this. So just when you get to the end make sure you skip over, go to that third one only and I'm going to fasten off. So once you're done completely 
just gonna trim my yarn and I'm just gonna weave in the ends. So we did a plateau tad um, Bernat blanket where there is no fringe but this one does have fringe and because of that it has a little bit of a different look and um, I think it's kinda nicer in, in my opinion but it's up to you. You are the creator. You can do what you like for yourself. So I've just I'll weave that in. See this was already weaved in from my last one. So you can trim that and then of course you can trim that one that you just finished off as well. And let's begin to do the strand work next. So we're now ready to apply the strands. So you're gonna have the whole thing all crocheted up and now it's time to put the strands through. So going on page number two of the instructions you'll see here is the instructions as the strands coming down is if you were to do it, okay? So what I'm gonna show you next is how to make these strands. This will be a little bit labor intensive I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, just to getting prepped and it's up to you in order to make this really work but it's really not hard it's just a matter of just, just a little bit of time. So we're gonna be cutting lengths of 96 inches okay and it says take three strands together and then thread them onto a darning needle to begin the lower edge. If you don't have a darning needle it's not a big deal in this particular case. So what you're gonna do and what I would do is that you're going to take three strands at one time. So if you have extra balls of the same color you can just uh, grab all three and just measure out 96 inches and then just cut it. So then you have three done at the same time. So I would do something like that. Okay so um, in this case because it is a tutorial I'm going to just, just kinda wing it. So once I get one done what I technically do is that I would just grab the one that's already cut and I will feed it from the yarn ball and I will keep pulling until both strands are the same. So the more stra uh, yarn balls you have for this the more strands you can pull through just like this and you want a total of three strands each in order to go down. Some people like the chain that instead of just using strands that's up to you. So let's uh, begin the next part of the tutorial. So you'll wanna go uh, basically from one side to another. Just make sure you have the right amount of chain spaces if you're following the diagram as, as what it says. And you're just gonna start up and you're just gonna come through and just taking all three strands. You don't need a darning needle with this. You can use it if you wish. But you can use your fingers and just go in and out of the, of the gapping spaces. Okay and just keep on going. Sometimes I use a big um, Tunisian uh, a needle as well and I keep going and you go all the way down through. And what you want to do is that when you go to do this you don't wanna do it so that the afghan is starting to bunch like this. You wanna keep it nice and consistent. You see it's just kinda of floating in there. And then basically the next one what we're going to do is that when we do the next one we want to maintain and come up from the other side. So let's just say for example you're doing the next one you wanna make sure that it's opposite to each other. Okay, so the next one it'll be like so. Okay, and this will get, gives you the plaid look if you go opposite. Okay, you're going to use a different string. I'm just showing you this way just to prove it uh, to you at this point. Okay. So you can see that the strands look like they're being woven in just like that. So you just gotta be conscientious on where you're starting. So you wanna leave about a nine inch um, space on one side of your afghan and to the other. And all you so you're gonna work all the way down. You're gonna get them all into position. You'll have your ups and downs in order to um, have the woven effect. So now it's time to secure these in permanently into position. So what you're gonna need is the same color strands that these are. So if you have a different color in the next one you'll need a different color strand. So we're gonna be using white. So you have to use three strands of 18 inch lengths. Okay and you wanna fold that in half just like that. So you're gonna come into the very end like so and you're going to fasten it around. So go right into the corner or go right into the space and pull through but stop. What I want you to do is with this new loop like so I want you to not only grab the yarn that is part of that strand but I want you to grab the three that are part of the woven effect and I want you to put it right through this loop like so. Be gentle about it and 
this is going to lock that strand going across and the fringe together as, as, as if it's one. So it looks like that the fringe is actually part of it which it is in some way. So let me review again. So here's the other side. So I want to grab another group of 18 or sorry 18 inches. So there's three strands there and I want to use my darning needle or sorry my uh, crochet hook and pull through. Okay, just pull the loop and I want you to put that strand through that and I want you to grab the three that are part of the woven side and I want you to pull it all through that new loop. Oh, I've gotta make sure I stay to the outside on the, on this. And so that will keep the strands relatively snug with each other as it's going all the way across plus you'll have some really awesome effects when it comes to doing all your, your fringe work just like so. So that would be how you do it. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com as well as Yarn Inspirations. This is how you would do it all the way across. Just use the same techniques and you can have this afghan if you wish. Until next time it's Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations. We'll see you. Bye bye.